Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Uh, today we're going to talk about politics in, a, in, 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 a, in another way. We're going to talk about uh, the campaigns that go on. We're going to talk about uh, recent campaigns nationally, but we're also going to talk about how locally a number of groups are starting to organize uh, for the 2018 election cycle that's coming up. Um, and uh, for that conversation, uh, my, my guest today is Mr. Uh, Josh Frosch, president of Pono Hawaii Initiative. Uh, so you will meet him shortly. Uh, but to start with, we have our, if this is going to be a light Trump dump segment. Um, so first of all, I want to jump into the elections that happened yesterday. Uh, we have the Georgia 6th election as well as the South Carolina 5th district elections that happened yesterday. Uh, it concluded last night. In both of those cases, the Republican won. Okay, not great for Democrats uh, on, the, on the outset, but the spin, I guess, that we want to put on that is, is it important to recognize that those are both Republican Party strongholds in those districts, uh, such that the most recent Republican that was in those seats as of, and was elected as of this last November 2016, it had a 23 and a 26 point uh, uh, win uh, percentage for the Republican. And yesterday, both of those seats were about a three point three to four point win, uh, you know, margin of victory. So therefore, it's about a 20 point swing towards the Democrats. And actually, all five of the special elections that we've had over the past several months uh, to replace the uh, outgoing, or I should say the appointed um, uh, uh, positions for, for the Trump administration, all five have been won by Republicans, but all five have demonstrated a significant swing in Republican strongholds, once again, towards the Democratic Party. So that actually bodes very well for 2018. Uh, so what I would say is, as we look at this, uh, what it is is, you know, aside from the obvious concerns from the, the, the Russia investigations and the um, obstruction of justice and so forth, aside from all of those uh, issues, we've got the healthcare concern. We've got the fact that Kansas has proven that their trickle-down supply-side economics does not work. And that's a message that needs to be really understood and get out there. In Kansas, they had to change their policy. Uh, and they had to raise taxes because it does not work. So what I would say going forward, and this is where I'll leave uh, the, the Trump up, it's going forward, the message that I will recommend nationally that we have, and that we participate in, is, is got two sides. Number one, let's make sure everyone understands supply-side economics failed in Kansas. Failed in Kansas. Compare that to Minnesota, and compare that to even just the city of Seattle in Oregon, where they have raised the minimum wage up to $15 per hour. And in Minnesota, they did the complete demand side economics, which is the complete opposite of the Republican perspective. And both of those have been wildly successful with none of the fear-based, uh, I guess, concerns. Uh, that, uh, that the GOP leveled at them. So anyway, that's an important one. Then the second one is, if they're about to remove 23 million people plus from the health care, uh, I, I don't see how that in any way is positive because that impacts everybody across the board, specifically children and the elderly. And what's more, we're talking about kids that are have pre-existing conditions such as cancer, and you're about to just take that away from them. I don't see how that is a moral choice that they can make, but it's what they're making. So those two things alone I think should be enough to swing the 2018 election cycle um, nationally. Now, locally, we have a different story, and that's where we get back to our guest and, and what the rest of this conversation is going to be about. Locally, in Hawaii here, we have a, a, a Democratic Party-dominated state. And we have a new Democrat, uh, recently uh, transitioned from Republican Party to Independent to Democrat, uh, just this last weekend. So our party is growing, and we have a dominant position, at least as it appears. So how do we proceed, and how do we address this from, a, from an election cycle perspective? Yes, there's nationally, but it's locally that we want to actually talk about how this can work. So to help me understand that and to talk through that a little bit, um, I, I want to bring back our guest. I want to uh, actually introduce our guest, Mr. Josh Frost, once again, president of, uh, uh, what is it, um, Pono Hawaii Initiative. Thanks for joining the show. I appreciate it. It's good to yeah, see you. thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So uh, first of all, uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Pono Hawaii Initiative and what you're doing and how you're really doing that, what your goals are and, and so forth. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, let's have uh, the, the, the audience here learn a little bit about you. 
What have you been up to? What are you doing? I know you're also taking classes and so forth. <laughs> what are you about and how did you get where you are now? Uh, how did I? Oh, that could be a long story. Um, <laughs> so as, as it relates to the show, I, um, in 2004, 2005, I read Howard Zinn's People's History of the United uh, States. And yeah. if you haven't read it, everyone should read it because it's a fantastic book. And from there, I was so sort of inspired and, and, and moved by it that I wanted to get involved in politics. And um, eventually, I chose the uh, Democratic Party locally over the Green Party um, because I actually wanted to get stuff done. And I didn't believe that the Green Party um, could do that. I identify as a progressive. I identify as a, a democratic socialist. I've been called a communist. I've been called all sorts of things. Um, I've been involved in local politics since 2006. Um, I helped found Progressive Democrats of Hawaii. Uh, in 2007, I helped found what would become Equality Hawaii um, and was one of the lead organizers in that organization for uh, civil unions and marriage equality, um, something I'm very proud of. And I've been an officer and activist inside the Democratic Party of Hawaii uh, since about the same time, 2006. Okay. Um, you, you've also worked uh, at the legislature or, or, and or in the governor's office. Uh, yeah. So you've been involved on that side. You've, been, you've, yes. been, you've, been, you've participated in, in policy, policy agenda and ideas. Yeah, so I've, I've worked in the executive branch. I've worked in the legislative branch. I've worked as an activist. I've worked on campaigns. Um, at one point early on, actually my first, very first political, political uh, job was I was the office manager for the Democratic Party. Um, this was probably 2009. Um, I did that for a while uh, before going to work at the legislature. So yeah, I've been, uh, I've had worn many hats and I've done many jobs. And that's uh, excellent. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you throughout all of this because that that's that's inspiring and it's important for people who are new to engaging to understand how things happen. And oh, you read a book and that is an amazing book. Howard Zinn's <laughs> yes, an amazing yeah, book. Absolutely. Um, so, and knowing that, okay, I, got to, I, I wanted to get involved. How do I get involved? Where do I go? Who do I contact? And, and knowing that there are dozens of groups out there, mm -hmm. and some of them more aggressive than others, some of them more progressive than others. Um, there's even, you know, Repub there are Republicans in Hawaii, a few of them. Um, so, okay. Again, thank you for all of that. Um, so now you are president of Pono Hawaii Initiative, and that is just kicking off this year. Yes. So I, the executive director, who is also the founder of uh, Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, HAPA, mm -hmm. Gary Hooser, former state senator, former uh, Kauai County councilman, awesome, awesome progressive. Um, and he and I have um, been talking for a while about trying to change the nature of, of electoral politics, and try to change the nature of the legislature and, and city councils. and. Um, Earlier this year, uh, with a handful of other uh, activists uh, from Hawaii, we formed Pono Hawaii Initiative. Um, our official sort of kickoff launch was just a week ago, uh, but we've been incorporated for, um, I think, three or four months three or four now. Months. Okay. And is that, um, is that an offshoot of HAPA, or is that, is, is that related? It's, um, it's not really related. They're, they're, there's parallel missions. Uh, HAPA is a C3 um, that works on issues and uh, can't do electoral politics, can't endorse candidates, can't give money to candidates. Pono Hawaii Initiative is a C4. Uh, our primary focus, um, according to the IRS, is, is lobbying. But we can endorse candidates. We can give money to candidates. Um, we will hopefully within the next, uh, well, by the end of the year, uh, be starting a PAC with the intention of, of identifying and supporting progressive candidates um, who really are getting into, who want to run for office because they aren't happy with where things are. They're not necessarily looking for a new gig. They're not necessarily looking to make a splash somewhere or to be influential. They believe strongly in the issues they care about and the issues that affect their communities. Okay. And those are the sorts of people that, that we want to try to support moving okay. forward. So what would you say, um, give us the, the, uh, the elevator pitch for uh, Pono Hawaii Initiative. Okay. What is it about and why 
Why should someone want to participate? Why should someone want to donate? Okay. So uh, I th for the people who, who pay attention, the last year nationally, politics was just abysmal. We have a president who doesn't know anything about anything. Um, or care. Or care, yeah. Um, and, and locally, uh, in 2017, pretty universally, everyone agrees that it was a pretty epic fail for the legislature. Yeah, um, the entire session passed very little, and nothing, yeah, and, and what substance. they did little, yeah, what they did pass was was non substantive. Right. Um, and this has been going on for a while. I do agree that this year was sort of uh, egregious in their sort of more extreme. Yeah, in their <laughs> inability to get anything accomplished, which is fascinating considering <coughs> it's Democratic Party dominated. Well, so let me say, <clears throat> it is so the. The legislators in the, Demo in the legislature are overwhelmingly Democrats. I would not, as a member of the party, I would not say that it is a Democratic Party-controlled legislature. And I think there's, it's, it's a minor distinction, but it's an important one. OK. Um, explain, ex explain that. So the people, in our, the people in the legislature have a D next to their name. Um, but if you were to ask them, what's in the platform? You know, or why are you a Democrat? I'm not sure that they would answer in specifics beyond the sort of broad Big Ten, oh, I care about working people and I care about, you know, making Hawaii better. Well, everybody does. You, and, you and, the yeah, environment. Right, right. Um, but if you look at what they do and not what they say, if you look at the, the issues that they support or oppose, it took, us, it took them, you know, a, a decade or more to do an increase in the minimum wage. This year, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even consider a $15 minimum wage. There have been people who've been working on paid family leave for the better part of a decade. Equal pay. Um, equal pay. Um, you know, there's, there's environmental issues and water issues. The uh, 2501 from last, last year, two years ago, that basically just gave a handout to A&B uh, mm -hmm. for water rights. I mean, these are things that, that yeah. progressives, that Democrats, that local people, um, you know, can all get behind, and, and our legislature, their, their general approach is, we'll, we'll, you know, move slowly. We've got to do this incrementally. We've got to do this step at a time, yeah, and, and yeah. it hasn't Politics worked. is a conversation. It is, no, and I agree, it is we a conversation. We have to go through the conversation, and we, and we have to find a consensus, and we have to work our way through so that we have a consensus. Yes. Well, it, the disconnect is consensus between whom and whom. Yeah. And no, uh, it, it is true. And there is a spectrum. I mean, even among Democrats, and frankly, even among progressives, there is a spectrum on how far do we go, how quickly, right? And when I first started, I was, you know, bright-eyed and uh, optimistic and, and idealistic and, and thought, well, if we just work really hard, we can get everything we want. And yeah, we all start there. <laughs> and it, right, exactly. But, but it, is, it, is a long, it is a hard slog, and, and you have to be prepared to take less than everything you want just to move the ball forward. And, and for me, the, the perfect example was, uh, you know, two or three years ago when we passed the 1010 minimum wage. I was um, legislative chair for the party at the time and was working with the coalition that, that um, passed that bill. And we were originally pushing for $12 over, I think, two or three years. And we got 1010 over four years. Which we're still not there yet. We're still not yet. So January 2018, we'll finally be at 1010. 1010 which will be just enough, enough maybe to cover inflation. Um, so, when they came, so when the legislature said, well, we'll give you 1010 over four years, um, my position was, no, let's, you know, we're coming into an election year, and, and I wanted to use it as an issue. Why can't you give people a living wage, right? And, and a good friend of mine said, look, that's fine, but there are people working now who are in desperate need of a, of a raise. Let me, let me put a little context around Yeah. 10, 10 an hour for a 40-hour work week is $440 a week before taxes, mm -hmm. which means we're talking $1,600 $1, a month right. before taxes. Right. How much is rent in Hawaii, typically? <clears throat> well, I, I, 12 to, I don't know what it is. I mean, I pay uh, $1,000 a month. You pay $1,000 a month, just yourself? Just, just for myself, for, for a small two-bedroom, and that's... Because my landlord is incredibly accommodating, they could get double. Absolutely, absolutely. what so, what I'm paying. So okay, uh, so the, 
just to frame that idea about, about that. So, okay, we're, we're gonna, we have to take a quick break, and then we're going to jump back, and we're going to learn All more right. about uh, Pono Hawaii Initiative. So thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii series. Thanks again for my guest, Josh Frost, for being here today, and we'll see you in one minute. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to politicians to regulators to the utility so please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for power up welcome back to think tech Hawaii's movers shakers and reformers politics and Hawaii series uh, once again I'm your host Carl Campagna uh, welcome once again mr. Josh Brosh president of Pono Hawaii initiative we are here today talking about I guess well we're, we're learning about Pono Hawaii initiative but we're talking about Hawaii politics and how we are trying to move some things forward and and change, what change might look like. So uh, let's go back to specifically Pono Hawaii Initiative. Tell us about your short-term, long-term goals, what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so long-term, we want to change the culture of politics in Hawaii, and we want to get good issues passed for the people of Hawaii. By culture, what are we talking culture, about? Culture, so specifically, um, the easiest way to, to explain it is to change the leadership structure in the legislature with bringing more progressives, solidly progressive legislators uh, replacing moderate to conservative Democrats in the, uh, the House and the Senate to move the entire legislature to the left, try to get more things how, passed. How do quicker. we identify which, so you're, you're talking about finding challengers for some yes. of these seats. Yes, so, so first, so it's sort of a twofold with, with respect to the election, it's identifying which legislators might be vulnerable and then identifying people in those districts that are viable, right? There's lots viable. of progressives they're, everywhere. They're electable, but they're... They've got to be able to win, right? They've got to be able to put in the time. They've got to be able to raise the money. Um, and they need to be, I mean, it, it sounds sad to say, but on some level, they need to be legitimate in order to be taken seriously by the electorate and therefore right. win an election, right? I mean, right. we want wins, right? And in order to do that, we need to be very targeted in which races, which legislators, um, okay. which districts we focus on. Um, have you, um, before I go into that question, as far as the electability side of it again, what sorts of things do you look for? Um, well, so if they've run before, we want to sort of see how well they performed, how much money they raised, get a sense of how much effort they put into walking the district, um, and then look at the numbers, like how, how close do they get to winning in, in that race. Mm -hmm. um, and if, you know, if all of that is sort of is agreeable, then, you know, we have a conversation. Are you looking to run again? You know, do you think you can do better, right? If they didn't raise enough money, do you think you can raise more money? We might be able to help with that, right? Um, do you have the time to, to do the door knocking that's really required? Um, I mean, it's, it's a full-time, I mean, it's sadly, it's a full-time job. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, you know, right? I, I, mean, <laughs> I, yes. I, I did. I did. I ran last year for state senate. I did not win. Um, but I did knock on the door, and I did meet a lot of people. And for me, what it came down to was I enjoyed those conversations when I had the opportunity to yeah. actually meet people throughout the district. I enjoyed those conversations. I really appreciated being able to learn what their interests were, what right. their concerns were, right. and try to find out beyond just my road needs repairs, um, what they were really hopeful right. as far as the legislature was concerned. And those are some of the things I, I appreciated the most. And I, and I believe that, um, you know, there are candidates who, I mean, I've talked to people who say, oh, I need to, you know, raise $60,000, I need to raise $80,000 um, in order to run. And I say, well, money is important. Right? I mean, every, you need a little bit of money to do a flyer. You need money for signs and things like that. But 
you don't need to match an incumbent dollar for dollar if you hit every house at least twice, right? right. And, and because... Like by hit, you mean... Door knock, knock on, door knock, right. Because what I... The challenge I had, because I hit a number of houses twice, uh, but some of those houses that I hit twice, both times, no one was home. Yeah. Uh, so there's only so much you can do. Doing Which is that. why a little bit of money is yeah. necessary. For the mailer. Right. right? But and you're not going to, you're not, I mean, the odds are, unless the incumbent is just wildly unpopular, um, you're not going to out fundraise them. I mean, incumbents have that, um, you the, know. The power of incumbents. Yeah. They've got name recognition. They've got, they're going to have the, the knee jerk support from all of the groups out there that would otherwise right. support you because we want to make sure that you know, right. all that. So and, they're also, and they're not likely, because they're sort of comfortable, they're not likely to do that legwork of door knocking that, that I think is required. Right, because maybe in some instances they did it 20 years ago right. and now they don't do that anymore. Because right. they, they haven't had a serious challenge in forever. Uh, many, so, many of them haven't had a challenge. Right, right. And so we want to try to change that. We want to do it with, with real solid... I mean, progressives. I mean, good progressive candidates. So, so but a solid who we progressive think we agenda. Win. Someone who is willing to stand up and go out there and champion the progressive agenda, which is a more left of Democrat, certainly more left of center than most sure. Democrats. Uh, so, what sorts of issues would you consider to be more progressive? In that well, respect? so again, I mean, fifteen dollar minimum wage, mm -hmm. uh, paid family leave. Um, you know, there's there's daycare. There's um, you know. Disclosure and regulation of pesticides, um, water rights, local food production, um, affordable housing, homelessness. I mean, you, the list can just go on and but on. I, and on. Say, I, I hear that, and you know, I, I, by the way, I'm, I'm all for that. What I find fascinating is a lot of that seems like it's just more common sense, though. Not just a not a progressive agenda, but <laughs> common sense would, as far as water rights are concerned. As far yeah. So what's the, I, I don't understand the, we don't go into, that's a whole other show, I think. To yeah. go into those things and, you and can have try to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so those are the sorts of things. You want to have someone who's able to be conversant in one of those issues, in multiple? Well, they need to have an inclination, right? I mean, most of the people um, that we're sort of looking at already have a history in activism. They already have a history on issues, right? Some of them have already run before. Um, so... We're not looking to pe we're not looking necessarily for people who we need to educate and train, um, if only because they're less likely that, to be actually. right. There is a different program for that, um, but people who who have the experience and, and already sort of know the issues and can speak intelligently on them in simple language to, to voters. Okay, um, that's the, the that's so that's part the, of the electability side. part actually is how is, well absolutely. you communicate with somebody yeah. when you just talk to them about different issues, right? right? And connect with them, yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. So that's the election side, um, and actually not. Um, again, sort of not the majority of, you know, the 49-51% of Pono Hawaii initiative. The other half will be organizing around ballot initiatives, right? So, Such as? Well, so the, the easiest example, although we won't end up doing it, is um, a county level minimum wage. Now, the, law, okay. the state law says the, the, the legislature, the state, is responsible for setting the minimum wage. Um, but if we could do things on um, housing, right? Um, issues that have to potentially have to do with rail. I mean, the rail was approved by um, ballot, right, by, mm -hmm. by voters. So we're looking at um, doing a ballot initiative, I think, initially on, on Oahu and Kauai. Um, Oahu, I think we're looking more along the lines of, of homelessness, housing, economic justice. We're still trying to find the right issue. Yeah. Um, but basically take it to the voters and say, this is something that the, the city council has failed to, to move forward on. Do you support and, and, it? And the state as well, because it's not state. just one. They're, they both well, have right, to work right, on that issue. Right, right, right. Um, but if they're, because it'll be a county level issue, I mean, we want to sort of focus on, you know, politicians, maybe just generally, elected officials have failed to move forward on this issue, whatever we end up having it be. On Kauai, I think it's going to be something more along the sort of GMO pesticide regulatory um, stuff. But again, I, that's, um, it, it's, it's very complicated. There's timelines we have to get. I think on Oahu, it's something like 28,000 oh, signatures. signatures in order to make so, it so, it, so saying that, I will segue into well, Pono Hawaii initiatives were just getting started. Um, for people who want to help, um, who want to help uh, with candidates, who want to help uh, get signatures for the ballot, 
initiative, uh, they can they can email and, me. And helping comes in multiple different ways. So yeah, I definitely. Want so to that's one. So that's one way. So yeah. so um, but also if if you don't have the time, um, we'd love to you know love it if you gave a donation. If you, in don't, any if you don't have the time, if you don't have the money, it, it, there's a way to help out. Whether it's showing up and helping sign waving, showing up and yeah. help canvassing, yeah, absolutely, uh, helping to knock doors. Um, helping to do phone banking, anything possible to help doesn't always have to mean money. Money goes a long way because it costs money to get the mailers out. Yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, for me, the you know, uh, the boots on the ground, the the hands on work, and I don't want to minimize the the the, the money because we need to be able to function. But it's really for the sake of candidates and for the sake of of moving issues forward. It is really the boots on the ground yeah. activist work, phone yeah. banking, sign waving. Um, you know, getting signatures, uh, just supporting candidates, doing whatever, yeah. that's really important. But people have families and lives and they're busy. And, and, and so, so in, in those yeah. cases, I say, okay, well, if you can't help us out with any of that, yeah. can you give us $20, $50, you know, well, whatever, because that's yeah. hugely appreciated. Um, yeah, yeah. So how would um, someone who's interested in supporting, how would they contact Pono Hawaii Initiative? How would they contact you? So. There is a website, uh, Pono Hawaii Initiative, all spelled out, dot org. Okay. I know it's kind of, it's long, but all the other good domain names were taken. Pono Hawaii so Pono Initiative Hawaii dot Initiative dot org. There it is. All spelled out. Yeah, there you go. Um, on there, there is a place to sign up for our mailing list. Okay. And there is a place to donate through our PayPal account. Okay. So those are the two sort of quickest, so you, easiest. So you're operational. And, uh, yeah. Uh, now, on, we're on, on Facebook. This page, on this page, you have on Facebook or on your website, you have the list of issues and agenda items. You have no, not yet. So on the website, there's a little bit about our vision and our mission, and a little bit about our story of how we came, you know, how we sort of got to where we are as an organization and why we think the work is important. Um, the website will will continue to add functionality and add information as we move forward. Okay. Um, but right now, I will admit it's a pretty basic. I mean, I think it looks nice, but it's it is very. Um, it's a very basic right. website. But you're yeah, you're yeah. just beginning. You're just getting rolling. Right. So we, we need money to come in. Uh, sign up for the mailing list. I mean, I, the, the, list. the most important thing I'd say is if you can, give us money. Mm -hmm. If you can't, that's OK. Um, sign up on our mailing list. And I, I want to urge people, and I know people don't like to do it, um, when they fill out the form online to include their residential address. I um, know that makes people a little. PO box. Not their P.O. box, because as we move forward, we want to be able to identify which districts which district, people exactly. live in so that we can target them. Go support this guy who's running. Because in elections this. are about the district. Right. So, and I know people, that makes people comfortable. I, I, yeah. I promise we don't sell that information. We don't use it egregiously. We don't give it to people who uh, aren't supportive of the organization. We use it strictly to keep people informed about what we're doing, what issues are going on, events, things like that. So please, if you sign up, give us your email address. Uh, but equally as important, give us your uh, residential address. I'll also address. recommend it's not just an email address. It's the email address that you will actually look at. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. And right. reply. Right. If you, well, yeah, so. if, if it goes into your spam, then it doesn't really exactly. do anybody any good. So. Uh, uh, we're, we're actually towards the end of our show. I think we only about 30 seconds. OK, left, so, so I, if, if people have specific questions, um, they can email me directly okay. at josh at ponohawaiiinitiative.org. Okay. Um, josh that's an email. at ponohawaiiinitiative.org if you want to have some specific questions or want to follow up with Josh directly. Yeah, and also on our Facebook, if you leave a message there, someone will get back to you okay. Um, okay. As, soon as, yeah, as soon as we can. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Thank you There's for a lot me. of work in front of us. Looking forward to that. Um, anyone who wants to help, anyone who wants to be involved with and engage this entire industry that's called politics, please, please in engage these conversations. Please contact and find out how you can help and where you can help. Yeah, we need everyone's help. Absolutely. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you very appreciate, much. I appreciate being on the show. You should Thanks come back again me. and let me know what yeah. is coming up and uh, activities that you've got coming up and, and other things. So, so keep in touch and we'll have you back on the show. Okay? Definitely, definitely. All right. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. Thank you to the crew and thank you to the staff and everybody here at Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks again to Mr. Josh Frost for joining us. Greatly appreciate it, and we will see you next week.